Hey, what's up guys, John here. The diesel crisis is far greater a problem than many Americans can imagine. A lot of people are just anticipating higher food costs, higher transportation costs. But there's many laws and policies that are gonna impact real estate, property values, and tenants alike all throughout the country over the next 13 to 14 months. And with it will come massive fines and property upgrade requirements. It's gonna get really crazy. It's gonna get very interesting. I talked about this slightly in the past on this channel, letting people know what was coming. And I've covered this saying that the reason I'm not buying real estate and I'm more of a seller right now, you know, last year I, rare, I barely bought any real estate. And the reason for that is because of what is coming now. And a lot of people are starting to wake up as to just how big of a problem this is actually going to be. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what you can expect and what you should be doing right now to prepare for this investing opportunity that you're gonna be walking into. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube's gonna share this content to educate more people about what's really going on in the economy. Take a look at this. Time Magazine, think the energy crisis is bad, wait until next winter. And a lot of people are saying that we have 20 days left of diesel. They're saying that this is all just moving forward. The timelines are just, uh, they couldn't be more perfect. Look at this. So this is Newsweek. U.S. faces inflation time bomb poised to explode just before the holidays. They go on to say that this is going to, well, the higher prices might harm the sectors that rely on diesel the most. Farming, construction, heating, and transportation. In turn, this might lead to a significant slowdown of the economy and a continued surge of inflation. So Jerome Powell right now is saying that, hey, we need to get inflation to 2%. So all the while they're going to increase interest rates, what's gonna happen? The cost to borrow money is gonna get more expensive. The cost to service existing debt is going to get much, much more expensive. The cost to refinance buildings is gonna get much more expensive. Everything is gonna get more expensive and they're going to say that the only way that we can combat inflation is to continue to increase interest rates. All the while, the actual food prices and transportation, everything is gonna be going up with it. They're not one and the same. They're just two problems that we're escalating at the same exact time. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't increase interest rates. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm simply saying that increasing interest rates has nothing to do with this uh, farming, construction, heating, and transportation crisis that we're gonna be walking into. This came out, the real deal, New York condos and co-ops face costly emission bill. Now, I covered this last year on my channel. Here's the video. July 7, 2021, I covered a very similar article saying the legislation approved Thursday as part of the ambitious package of bills, right? And they're saying that the deadline's 2024, 2024. And I was talking about this July 7th. Nobody was talking about this back then. And now, to put this into context and just to how expensive this is actually going to be and what this is going to look like, they give two examples with two buildings in New York City. Now, this is not just New York City. A lot of people will say, you know, it's just New York, you know how they are, you know, that city is. No, it's happening in Miami, it's happening in LA, it's happening in Europe, all these different locations, all over the world, they're all doing the same thing. So it doesn't matter where you live, this is something that's going to likely apply to you. It's gonna happen. Look at this, 157, now they, they dive in saying it's billionaires row. A lot of people will say, okay, billionaires, you know, they should pay more. They do this intentionally. Now it says that this fine, but local law 97 allows 157, no more than 5,000 tons. So they're saying that it currently produces 5,600 tons of carbon a year, and they're no longer, they're not allowed more than 500 tons. So the difference of 600 tons of carbon is 20 grand a month or 18 grand a month, $20,000 a year, right? So this is what they're going to be fined. These property owners are going to be fined $200,000 a year. Now another building, uh, Zeckendorf Development, 15th Central Park West, one of the city's most lucrative condos ever, appears to be nearly 125 tons past its limit. That comes out to about three grand a month, 2,800 bucks a month, right? So all of these buildings, you take a look at what's actually happening right now, all these property owners are gonna be hit with all these new costs in New York City. At the same time, they have rent regulations and rent control. So they're no longer able to, or they're, they're not able to simply just increase rents to make up for their cost. In fact, these costs are gonna be so great that they say that it's gonna impact 6.8 million households in New York, 6.8 million households, and it's gonna cost $300 billion, $300 billion. It's gonna cost about $44,000 per tenant. That's the cost, $44,000 per tenant. And in Miami, look at the website, miamigov.com. They say right here, starting 2024, 
the same timeline as New York City, required all new buildings to be solar ready, right? This requirement would also apply to existing buildings at the time of substantial retrofit. In the future, the policy could be expanded to require new buildings to install solar. Installing a solar ready, uh, solar ready, storage ready solar system will reduce future battery installation costs, right? They go on to say, provide additional policies or financial incentives to encourage, encourage private solar installation, uh, install solar and storage in public buildings, partner with community organizers, nonprofit trade organizations. They have all these different new regulations that are going to be coming critical to accelerating EV adoption will be the availability of charging stations and infrastructures. You're going to have to start uh, incorporating all of these charging stations into these buildings, all of which are going to be at the expense of the landlord. So you look at just all what a lot of these changes are. This is all going to be at the, at the uh, uh, risk of the landlord and the property owner. Electrify 100% of public vehicle fleet, including trolleys, by 2035. Now, you look at a place like, uh, you know, European Parliament moves to mandate EVs by 2035, right? Same timeline, same timeline, 20, 2035, 2035. So uh, evaluate the potential to implement low emission zone in urban core, evaluate implementing an electric vehicle sharing program. Uh, but all of this goes all throughout Miami and this, this green building sector, which includes energy efficient contractors, electricians, and other specialty contractors account for 35% of Miami's green jobs. So you have to ask yourself, what does this look like? In a situation where rents are falling, the cost to borrow money is increasing. It's gonna look like a situation where a lot of landlords and property owners are just gonna walk away from their property if they come to a situation that looks like this, which this is the current pro forma that a lot of property owners are going through. So we'll look at, I'll make this a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see. If we look at, let's say, this example, there's a seven unit building producing uh, 1,500 bucks a month in monthly income, right? So it's $10,500 per month across seven doors, right? 1,500 times seven, $10,500 a month, uh, $126,000 a year in gross scheduled income. So how do you determine the value of this building? It's the net operating income divided by the purchase price. So if the $126,000 per year is your gross scheduled income, and let's just say 60% of that is actual net operating income, that would mean that you're making about $75,600 per year on this building if you were to pay all cash for the property. Now a 5% cap rate, which is the 5% return if you were to pay all cash for the property, would bring that building's property value to about a million five, one point five twelve, right? So if you borrow 1.2 million at 4% interest rate, the mortgage costs about 5,800 bucks a month. So after you pay for your you know, debt service and expenses, you make about 500 bucks a month. Now, a lot of investors were going out there doing that. They were saying, you know what? I'm gonna buy a building, a seven unit building just like that. I'm gonna buy it based on a $1,500 a month rental. I'm gonna increase the rents. I'm gonna fix it up. I'm gonna do whatever I can do to try to drive the value of that building north to 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9 1 million, maybe $2 million. And then I'm gonna pull money out of the building, right? That was the whole plan that a lot of investors had. Now, what does this plan look like? When interest rates go from 4% to 7%, the plan goes like this. The seven unit building, same numbers, same everything. They go from making $500 a month to losing $1,684 per month just on the current interest rates of 7%. Now, that was based on rents staying stable. Now, what we are seeing is rents are falling. So what does this actually look like? I mean, this isn't, I've been talking about this for a while as well on this channel, that rents are going to fall. And now you just start looking, Reno apartment rents dip. Rents starting to fall across the US. They're, start, they're set to drop even more in 2023, right? Rental market outlook, recession unlikely, rents falling. All this is like the last couple of days. So what is this gonna look like? That $1,600 figure that they're losing monthly is gonna go to 2,000, 2,200. 2,500, and then these same exact property owners are gonna be forced to come out of pocket even more to do all these property upgrades. Even the building owners that can hang on, they'll still have to do the property upgrades. They will not have the equity to borrow against their buildings. They'll have to pay all cash or walk away. Lenders will require 20 to 25% equity, and that equity was just taken with decreased rents and increased carrying costs. Now, if you own a million dollar building and you owe $500,000 against that building, you might find a lender to write you a check for 250 or 300,000 and get some cash. But if you owe a if you own a million dollar building and you owe eight hundred and fifty thousand, nobody's lending you money. 
nobody's going to, because they want a margin of safety in the deal. So what's ultimately going to happen is if you don't have the actual cash to go do the upgrades and to get that property, you know, up to standard, you're going to be in really big trouble as these fines really start to rake in. And so we look at even places like, you know, Los Angeles is doing California air regulators to consider phasing out diesel big rigs. This just came out four hours ago. Um, California moves towards mandating zero emission heavy duty, right? Like this is happening in real estate as well, all throughout LA County. Uh, so this is gonna be a really, really, really big change that a lot of people are not taking into consideration. So what I think is ultimately gonna happen is I think we are gonna see a once in a lifetime opportunity to invest in real estate. And I think what people need to really pay close attention to are the laws. That's one of the main reasons I was not running out there diving into real estate last year you know, thinking that, hey, you know, this, I'm going to follow the pack. I'm going to just go out there and borrow, borrow, borrow and try to accumulate as much property as possible. It's because I felt that these laws were going to become a real problem and we were going to start to have more sellers than available buyers. And when that generally happens, prices fall. And as borrowing costs continue to rise and rents fall, you just have, uh, you know, Christmas for investors. That's what's going to happen. I think a lot of people are going to be shocked with the true cost to bring these buildings up to standard. It's not simply you know, you do some uh, small little improvements. No, I mean, these these standards, they say, I mean, it's, it's crazy. So you would need uh, boilers, you would need potentially new windows, you would need even to replace the entire envelope of the structure. So you think an old 1920s building in New York City, it might have cracked stucco. There might be energy leaving the building. And so when they go do these tests, if they see that, hey, there's energy leaving, they would require you to take out all of the exterior stucco and redo the entire building, the entire building to ensure that you keep the energy inside. They would also have you flip out your uh, washers, dryers, your stoves and ovens, uh, everything. Everything would have to be completely on solar and on clean energy. So you're gonna have all these changes coming and you're gonna have all these landlords that don't have the cash to actually do these changes. And so what are you gonna have, right? You're gonna have a problem. What do you think about this entire situation? I think that we're stepping into a once in a lifetime opportunity to invest over the next 12 to 18 months. And I think we're gonna catch a lot of investors that simply weren't paying attention. You know, if you're following this channel, you were paying attention, you know what's going on. But if you wanna invest in real estate, go to cashnow.video. It's an investor-based credit repair company, my company. We help people get ready. So if you have bad credit and you want to qualify for mortgages, you want to be able to go out there and buy real estate cheap, go to cashnow.video and you know fill out the application. It's a two, three question uh, questionnaire and we'll have someone from my team give you a call and give you a free consultation to see if we can help you at cashnow.video. Subscribe here, subscribe also to my second channel and uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok up in the banner and I'll catch you guys in the next video.